What's up tech fans, Kevin here on Tech of Tomorrow, we're covering all the biggest PC games to come out this holiday season. And today we finally have our full review of one of the biggest games not just to come out for this holiday, but one of the most anticipated titles of all year, Battlefield 4. Updated with DICE's Frostbite 3 engine, Battlefield 4 promised to bring a new level of realism and interactable environments compared to its predecessors. Does it live up to this promise? Let's find out. So, Battlefield 4. To begin with, this game is really pretty. Good looking water effects, details on guns and structures, plenty of special effects going on all at once, and surprisingly not that intensive considering. As an example, check out this level right here, Shanghai, the second mission of the single player campaign. During the segment you see here on our system, which includes a GTX 780 and an i7-4770K processor, on 2560 by 1440 we saw average frame rates of 48.8 on ultra, 77 on high, and 119 on medium, while on 1920 by 1080 we got 76.5, 114.6, and 177.1 average frames per second. The single player campaign in this one feels like a pretty significant shift stylistically from the one in Battlefield 3. There's a much heavier focus on your team of characters specifically and giving them actual personalities as well as character interaction. Beyond that though, there's little to help this one stand out from most modern military FPS campaigns. It's short, only lasting about 7 to 8 hours, and what story it has is still fairly straightforward. There's an enemy army, you're a marine, now fight your way through the entire opposing force with just three people. I also find it a bit odd and annoying that you play the role of the team leader, yet you literally never speak, and instead, everyone else always does your talking for you and orders you around. They also love yelling your name about every 5 seconds in game. This one's also obsessed with explosions to a full-on Michael Bay extent. Every mission will have at least three points at which a nearby missile hits, a car crashes, or a building collapses causing you and your team to fall down and pass out for a moment. Overall, the experience isn't anything too special. Its story is a bit more engaging than 3's, but in the end it still doesn't make itself any more memorable. Though it is worth noting that beating it and viewing different endings does unlock weapons in the multiplayer, so it's at least worth running through it for some target practice and unlocks. It's also worth noting that as of right now, the single player has a lot of stability issues. There's a lot of missions that'll crash midway through or even right at the end, forcing you to start back at the very beginning, or even situations in which levels don't load properly, or events don't trigger, forcing you to reload a checkpoint. It's something that's fixable with time, but still annoying. Now of course the campaign in this one is really just one gigantic tutorial and side diversion for the main reason that most people buy this game, the multiplayer mode. At its core, Battlefield 4 feels very familiar to Battlefield 3, though there are numerous little tweaks and new features to note once you start playing more. Classes serve the same roles as they did in 3, divided into Assault, Support, Engineer, and Recon. All of the classes have received some minor tweaks and new additions. There have also been some new weapon features that are shared by all classes, including changeable firing modes, and in some cases multiple scope options. Players are also now able to counter knife enemies in melee if they are facing them. Overall the class balance is okay, but Engineers still feel like the most important class in large-scale matches where vehicles star, and being able to heal them or deal big damage to an opposing one is just way too useful of an advantage to pass up. Now while these changes minorly affect gameplay and what classes you may prefer to play as, the really big thing that DICE wanted to emphasize a change on is the map designs. Currently without any DLC there are 10 different maps to play on, which can be used in all 7 different game modes, which is a really nice feature. The one big thing that DICE did with their map designs that they really wanted to emphasize is levolution, the idea of maps changing and evolving as games ensue. Now some of this is fairly familiar territory. Lots of destructible walls and cover for instance, but what this has moved towards is that there are more interactable objects on each map, as well as usually having one major event that can be triggered to greatly change the map's design. The Siege of Shanghai map was their favorite one to push because it involves a whole skyscraper collapsing, but other examples include destroying bridges or other major buildings that can block normally passable places. Now I for one really enjoyed this concept and I think it was a really great idea to change match flow up. Instead of just having two teams go back and forth, there's now different things that force you to adjust your tactics in the long run. Now Battlefield 4 has also seen a change in what game modes are available. Returning modes include Conquest for large scale area conquering, Domination which is the smaller scale infantry focused version, Rush where one offensive team tries to destroy key points as you move around the map, and the classics in any FPS, team and squad focused deathmatch. One of the new modes included is Diffuse, which is basically Counter-Strike the mode, in which teams take turns trying to plant bombs and there is no respawn until the match ends. The other new mode is Obliteration, a larger scale version of Diffuse in which two teams compete over randomly spawning bombs, simultaneously trying to use it to destroy enemy key areas while defending their own. Diffuse is a nice addition for people looking for a more squad and teamwork focused mode where death is not nearly as forgiving, while Obliteration makes a good third option for those interested in large scale objective based battles but are tired of playing nothing but Conquest and Rush. 
This game also features the return of the commander mode, allowing a player to take a backseat support role in large scale matches to grant extra tactical benefits to his team, like calling in missile strikes or warning his teammates of impending danger. There's also a nifty new single player mode called Test Range, giving players a free and open place to test out and practice with different weapons and vehicles, so they don't go in blind to a match and anger everyone with their horrible piloting skills. Now all that being said, just like in the single player mode, the multiplayer mode is having a lot of stability issues right now. There have been a lot of crashing matches or even just having problems connecting to them in the first place. It was a lot worse at the game's launch and has been steadily getting better, but it's still a problem, especially if you consider how long a conquest or obliteration match can last and having all of that effort go to waste. Those of you that have already bought the game know this pain, but if you have yet to and you still want to based on what you've seen in the gameplay, you have the benefit of being able to keep your ear to the ground and wait till these issues are less common. Now in all honesty, with all the changes together, the core experience itself still feels very much the same. New maps, new game modes, levolution, and an increase in prettiness are all good things, but in the end, this game does little to change the opinion of current fans or dissenters. Basically, if you liked Battlefield 3, you'll continue to like Battlefield 4 as long as the current stability issues don't cause you to fly into a rage. And if you've never been a fan of the series, even with trying it, this one's going to do very little to change your mind. Well that was our review of Battlefield 4, if you like what you heard, make sure to check out the link in the description to grab a copy for yourself. And while you're down there, if you've been enjoying all this PC gaming content on Tech of Tomorrow, make sure to let us know by hitting that like button, we'd really appreciate it. If you're not a subscriber yet, now is the best time to become one because we have way more content on the way, including our full review of Call of Duty Ghosts. Until then, I'm Kevin, you've been watching Tech of Tomorrow, and we'll see you next time.